This is the history of medicine in Langlade County, a presentation given to the Langlade County Historical Society in November of 2010 by Dr. John McKenna and Joe Hermelin. The history of medicine can roughly be divided into three sections. The early years, covering the period from Antigo's founding in 1879 to the opening of the hospital in 1933. Then the middle years cover the period from 1933 to the 1950s. In that time the hospital expanded, it improved treatments, there were group practices established in Antigo. And then in more recent times, which for us here means from 1950s to the present, there were further improvements in medical practice, a clinic opened, and then that brings us up to the present and into the future with the plans for the new hospital. Antigo was founded in 1879 when Francis Delaglise came to this area and built his cabin which was the focal point for his activities as a timber cruiser. Not too long after that, New County was formed out of parts of Shawano County and Marathon County in 1880. At that point, the county population was 685, and a few years later, Antigo became the county seat. That takes us to the founding of Antigo and the county, and it was very soon after the uh, Langley County was formed that the first physician arrived. He was Dr. E. Smith, and he only stayed briefly. Shortly after that, another doctor, F. J. Despens, arrived, and he did not stay very long either. But a medical society was organized as early as 1897. Medical practice in those days was quite primitive, as you can see here. Here is an early doctor, Dr. F. V. Watson, in 1902, he's performing an operation in his office with two nurses and a pharmacist assisting him. And as you can see, um, sterile conditions and, and uh, cleanliness were not exactly what you have in today's medical practice. One of the early very prominent doctors in this area was Dr. I.D. Stephan, and he uh, went to college at Lawrence, he taught school, and then moved to Antigo in 1887 to practice medicine. He was a surgeon for the Chicago Northwestern Railroad, which was a major employer in Antigo at that time. In 1890, together with another doctor, J.F. Doyle, he established Antigo's first hospital. Uh, that building no longer exists but he did later purchase another property on 5th Avenue and Elm Street and operated the Antigo Hospital out of there. Uh, at that time, he partnered with Dr. G.W. Moore, who eventually took over the Antigo Hospital. It's interesting to note that I.D. Stephan was more than a practicing physician here. He was very involved in community affairs, serving as an alderman, serving on the county board, and serving three terms as mayor of Antigo. The hospital, the second hospital that Dr. Stephan operated, together with Dr. Moore, was on 5th Avenue and Elm Street. And this is a photograph of the building. It had 24 beds. Here, are, here on the inset is a group of nurses who were working at the hospital. And the hospital was operated by Stefan and Moore for a while. Eventually, Moore was joined by his nephew, Dr. George E. Moore. Dr. G. W. Moore uh, came to practice in Antigo in 1905, took over the hospital in 1918, but later he moved to California for health reasons. While in Antigo, he was prominent as a president of the Langley County Medical Society. He was the city health commissioner and a city physician. His nephew, Dr. G. E. Moore, joined his uncle in 1919. After his uncle moved to California, he was joined by Dr. Joseph Lambert in 1924 and then eventually 
by Dr. Robert Cromer in 1955. While in Antigo, Dr. G. E. Moore was a member of the American College of Radiology, the Wisconsin Medical Society, and the Langlade County Medical Society. He published extensively on radiology and bone surgery, and he collaborated with Eastman Kodak and Yale University in developing X-ray photography. This is that building today at the corner of the northwest corner of Fifth Avenue and Elm Street. The northwest corner of Fifth Avenue and Elm Street shows the building today, which was the Antigo Hospital. It's much changed, but as you can see on in the insert, that uh, some structures of the building are the same, and it's somewhat recognizable as the old hospital. Another early hospital in Antigo was the City Hospital, which was at First Avenue and Superior Street. And that hospital was operated by two brothers, Drs. E. J. Donahue and M. J. Donahue. And they were assisted by their sisters, Agnes Donahue and Teresa Donahue. The Donahue family moved to Antigo from Sheboygan in 1882. And again, it was the railroad that brought them to Antigo. Dr. E. J. Donahue grew up in Antigo, and he returned in 1907 to practice medicine. He it would eventually become a major force in establishing the Langlade Memorial Hospital, but sadly he died at the age of 52 in 1933, just as the new hospital was about to open. His brother, Dr. M. J. Donahue, graduated from Antigo High School in 1890, and he set up practice in Antigo in 1899. He was chief of staff at Langlade Memorial Hospital from 1933 until his death in 1956. Again, this is that hospital, the uh, hosp city hospital today. It's at the northeast corner of First Avenue and Superior Street. There was another house hospital, we might call it, that existed for a few years. That's, this is a current photograph of that building at 1503 Claremont Street. It was operated by doctors Baird and McCandless, and it lasted just three or four years, beginning operations in about 1933. So those were the hospitals in the early years of Antigo that operated out of what were basically homes and, and run by doctors who were somewhat uh, related or knew each other. There were, doctor, there were medical practices in other parts of the county, too. In Elko, there was a physician as early as 1899. Uh, Dr. P.J. Daly came to Elko in 1916 to set up the first real practice in Elko. And in 1932, he began practicing jointly in Elko and in Antigo. And in 1946, his son D joined him as a partner in the Daly Clinic. There were also medical facilities in White Lake. As early as 1917, Dr. Clayton Charles arrived and Dr. W. E. Ellis followed shortly after. Dr. Nultbaum practiced in, El in White Lake from 1923 to 43. When he left town, uh, the people of White Lake persuaded Dr. Russell to come to White Lake, but he didn't stay very long. Mrs. Marcella Schlaffer, an industrial nurse, was hired in 1943, and she was assisted by Dr. G. E. Moore, who held evening office hours once a week. He would drive from Antigo to White Lake. He's the same Dr. G. E. Moore who operated the hospital in at uh, Fifth Avenue and Elm Street and would eventually become part of the staff at Langlade Memorial Hospital. There were also senior care homes in the early years. Most of these were private homes where people were willing to take in uh, boarders who needed assisted living. And this was one such house that uh, served that purpose. It's at the corner of Superior Street and Second Avenue. 
Today there are several facilities dedicated to those required assisted living. There's the Eastview Medical Center. The new hospital had its origins going uh, way back in 1636 when Jerome Leroyer founded a congregation of women called the Daughters of St. Joseph in Montreal, Canada. And their, their mission was to establish hospitals for the poor. In 1894, the sisters established their first U.S. hospital in Vermont. From there, they established several other hospitals in, uh, in other U.S. locations, including New London, Wisconsin. In 1929, Antigo officials decided to build a new hospital, but re it remained incomplete due to lack of funds. So this was uh, also partly affected by the Depression, which set in in 1929. But in 1933, doctors and businessmen in Antigo, they seeking to improve the quality of care in Antigo and recognizing that New London had a good hospital, asked the sisters to administer the hospital in Antigo. J.C. Lewis was a prominent Antigo resident and businessman, and he led the argument to invite the sisters to take over the hospital, which at the time was basically an empty building. And so, in 1933, on April the 5th, the sisters uh, opened, were able to open the Memorial Hospital. It was the same day that Wisconsin voted to repeal prohibition. I wonder if there's a connection. And here's the hospital as it originally appeared when it opened in 1933. The original hospital had 50 adult beds, 18 bassinets, and other services. As you can see, the steps leading up to the entry uh, were probably quite formidable for people who required assistance, and this would not be part of a hospital design today. The first surgical procedure in the new hospital actually occurred before the hospital officially opened. It was ready to go and was slated for opening, but then on April 2nd, 1933, Mr. Bernard Olson had appendicitis and required an appendectomy. And so before the hospital officially opened, Dr. Eugene McKenna performed the first surgery in the hospital. Here is the staff, the medical staff at the hospital in 1933 when it opened. And some of these people we've spoken about earlier, and they're here, Dr. Stefan, G.E. Moore, E.A. McKenna, who performed the first surgery, M.J. Donahue, and P.J. Daly. These were all people who we've discussed uh, previously in this talk, and they were all involved with the hospital when it opened. In addition, other doctors involved included Bloor, Flightley, Notbaum, Dorzeski, Lambert, P uh, Partridge, Stauff, Zelmer, and Wright. The sisters who administered the hospital are shown here, and they're the ones that really got the hospital going. Here's the hospital board in the year that the hospital opened. Some of these people have been identified and some of them uh, we have not yet been able to identify. A few years down the road, the Langlade County Memorial Hospital staff included these people, including doctors Roth, Daly, Curran, Lambert, Garbish, and Cromer, who are seated from left going from left to right, and standing, going from left to right, are Fox, Blink, Kruger, Beatty, J.E. McKenna, Habel, and Garrity. In the insert is our Dr. Bates and Mormond. In 1954, a new wing was planned for the hospital, uh, and groundbreaking took place, as shown in this photograph, in 1954. The two sisters we've identified in this photograph are Sister Clarissa Donovan and Sister St. Michael. 
and the new addition, when completed in 1954, looked like this. In 1948, there was a dinner honoring the 50th anniversary of Dr. M.J. Donahue's entry into medical practice, and seated with him are some of, the, of his colleagues at the hospital. Uh, Dr. M.J. Daly was the doctor who first operated the hospital at Superior and First Street and was the medical chief of staff at the Memorial Hospital. During all this time, there were group practices and clinics operating in the Antigo area in the 1960s. There was the General Clinic, established by Drs. McKenna and Fox, and later joined by Drs. Blink and Holm. They originally operated at 5th Avenue, at 813 5th Avenue. This is a picture of that building today. And then they would move to eight, they moved to 837 Claremont Street. This is now the site of the, uh, across from the courthouse, but it was at that time the old, an old school site, and it was the clinic that doctors McKenna, Fox, Blink, and Holm operated. Here is uh, doctors McKenna and Fox looking over their medical records in a photograph dated 1989. This is a, a bill from 1967 from that clinic. The, uh, it says a house call and injection, total $5. Another clinic that operated in Antigo in the 1960s was the Antigo Medical Center. It was operated by Drs. Lambert, Cromer, and G. Moore. Initially, they operated out of a building at 612 Claremont Street, and later they would move to 1111 Langlade Road. Here's Dr. Cl Cromer in his Claremont Street office checking blood pressure. So by 1986 there were two major clinical groups operating in the Antigo area and I've shown them here as they appeared in ads in the Antigo phone book. So the general clinic on Claremont Street had doctors Fox, McKenna, Mormond and Reinardi, and general surgery was performed by Todd Hendrickson. The Antigo Medical Center uh, on Langlade Road had doctors Cromer, Hoyce, Garrity, Keener, surgery by Earl Roth, and internal medicine by Dr. Randy Myers. In 1992, groundbreaking occurred for a new clinic to be built and associated with the hospital. And this, this was the groundbreaking in 1993. The new clinic was a modern and beautiful addition to the medical treatment in, as practiced in Langlade County. And here we see some scenes from, of the original uh, artist's rendering of the building and the building today. The General Clinic, associated with the hospital then, in 1993, had these doctors practicing medicine. J.E. McKenna, Fox, Mormond, Thomas Wolfe, Hedge Graves, Turnbull, Keener. Internal medicine was Randy Myers and Thomas Tuttle. General surgery was Todd Hendrickson and Michael Probstfeld. And as you can see, they had offices in Burnhamwood and Elko as well. In 1993, the Antigo Daily Journal published a special edition uh, welcoming this clinic and showing all the people involved. So here are some of the physicians involved. From the left are Dr. James Mormond, Dr. John McKenna, Dr. Robert Keener, Dr. Gary Hegrains, Dr. Todd Hendrickson, Dr. Randy Myers, Dr. Ted Fox, Dr. Thomas Wolfe, Dr. Thomas Tuttle. Not shown in the photograph was Dr. J. Turnbull. And then there was a pharmacy associated with the new clinic. And here are Pat Fry and Jim Schofield, who were the 
clinical pharmacists. In more recent years, St. Joseph Outpatient Center was built in 2002. And here is a view of that outpatient center. Then came the Gerald and Dorothy Volm Cancer Center, which opened officially in 2008. So the entire hospital campus has expanded quite significantly since 1933 when it was initially built. Here you see part of the cancer center, the outpatient center, the clinic, and the main hospital. And it stretches across Fifth Avenue. There's other views of the hospital complex. Some of the hospital staff, uh, as of this talk in 2010, include Dennis McFadden, Deb Safford, Sharon Corbett, and Corey Slominski. These are new health care providers added recently. Here's Dr. Randy Myers, Bart Neeland, Anna Gilbertson, and Noel Deep. And of course, all of this is leading up to future plans. In 2010, the hospital announced plans to expand greatly. And ground was broken for a new hospital. Here is Sister Dolores with a newspaper from 1933 showing the original hospital being opened and she is uh, posing with this old newspaper. The board of directors in 2010 as at the time that the plans were made for this new hospital, uh, the board is shown here. And here's an artist's rendering of what the new hospital complex will look like. Uh, on the top is a patient room and the bottom is the lobby. And an aerial view showing what the hospital will look like when complete. This is a little difficult to make sense of. But the yellow, the building outlined in yellow, will be the new hospital. And it will include a new helipad where the old swimming pool was. And it's shown in blue. The existing general clinic is outlined in green. And the skywalk to the Volm Cancer Center and the outpatient center is, is signified by the red arrow. This talk was uh, prepared um, at the museum using museum archives with the help of a group of doctors who together aggregated 200 years of experience of medical practice in the Antigo area. And they include, doc from left to right, Drs. Cromer, who came in 1955, Dr. McKenna, who came in 1961, Dr. Garrity, who came in 1954, and Dr. Fox, who came in 1963. Much of the information for this presentation can be found in the books The History of Langlade County by Robert Desiro, Medical History of Langlade County, a booklet prepared by the Women's Auxiliary, articles taken from the Antigo Daily Journal, from the museum archives and from the archives at the hospital and for that we had help from Sarah Olofsson and Sister Dolores Demelung.